the 2023 Trust House New Zealand Cycle Classic will once again see riders from across the world converge on the Wairapa for five days of international stage racing. Fifteen teams comprising of ten nations will take on the winery district before contesting around New Zealand's capital Wellington. This will include the introduction of a circuit around Miramar on the penultimate day. Since its inception in 1988, the tour has seen several champions introduce themselves to the world stage. These have included the likes of Brian Fowler, Robbie McEwen, Julian Dean, Richie Port and George Bennett. At the end of five days, who will add their name to the illustrious list of winners of New Zealand's only UCI 2.2 sanctioned race? On the menu for day three for the riders was 2,000 metres worth of climbing over 155 kilometres for the Queen stage in this year's tour. It wasn't long before four riders got themselves off the front. This included the likes of Richard Lawson and Bentley kneecapped Alton, Matthew Wilson, who was tracing all the various points available for the King of the Mountains, while Kian Watts was hunting out the sole sprint on the road to ensure that he could put himself into the green jersey for the sprint ace. Eventually, it would be the Australian kneecapped Alton who would ride solo until the 145 kilometre mark, before the climbers in the peloton put the pressure on to challenge for the yellow jersey. With some five kilometres to go, Josh Burnett of the Bolton Equities Black Spoke Pro Cycling made his move up the steep Admiral Hill climb to the finish. He was soon joined by the sole Dutchman in the field this year, Von Engeler. These two went head to head before Burnett gave it one last kick to take out a decisive victory in the Queen stage to take out his first ever UCI stage. Well, fantastic day for this uh, day four of the tour, and uh, it's a tough-looking course, though. Yeah, it's a very tough-looking looking course. I mean, the climb's not uh, too hard on paper when you look at it, but when you're six laps in, seven laps in, it's been hard racing. We're obviously four days in now. I think it's going to um, take its toll on the peloton. And do you think there might be a few opportunities sort of out of sight, out of mind, as they head around the bay? Yeah, it's definitely windy and it's tailwind, so there's a good chance of getting away um, early on and out of sight. So there's plenty of options for the day. And uh, obviously uh, yesterday we saw you in some pretty good sort of form heading towards Admirals. Yeah, it was all right. I, I was in the front group over the second last climb and wasn't quite sure how the lead's going to be on the final climb and I thought I'd try and get away with a few of the boys that had gone up the road. But um, yeah, not too much cooperation, so I just sucked to head down and see what we could do. But um, Palaton swallowed us up pretty quickly. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time for this to bring the race back into Wellington. We did it last year in the circuit. It was fantastic with a large number of people there. But today it's huge. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of people around the circuit. It was a good, good uh, grand fund this morning. So I hope the boys put a good show this afternoon. Especially after the uh, pandemic, uh, every city needs events and we are trying to do the best we can. We got people here from all over the country coming to the Gran Fondo. We got international riders participating today and our television coverage is watched all over the world. So it's a great day to promote Wellington and New Zealand and especially in a day like this today. So we've got I built uh, team here with us in the tour this year. A new team and how's it been going for you guys? Yeah, it's been going good. Um, boys are feeling good today and the tour has been going, been going good. And for you personally, is this your first UCI tour? Uh, no, I did one in Canada, which was real cool, but yeah, first elite men sort of racing, yeah. Well, Boris, we're into day four of the tour, so I guess the bodies are a bit fatigued. Uh, yeah, it's been relatively controlled racing and then really hard at the end of yesterday, but other than that, it's actually been just quite controlled racing, so not too much fatigue, but just conditions today are looking like it's going to be hard. Yes, the winds are starting to pick up. That'll make life challenging around the bay. Yeah, it's, it's going to be gusty, I think, and then there's um, really technical descents. I think it'll be the climb might not be too bad, but the actually punching out of that descent, I think it's going to be the hardest bit of the day, to be honest. Well, the riders are starting to come around us here. Must be time to start. All the best this afternoon. Yep, try and get to the front and stay there. Riders and officials alike transferred across from Masterton into Wellington overnight to contest a day four on the penultimate stage of 120 kilometres, some 12 laps around the circuit of Miramar. 10.2 kilometres for these riders today, with hill climbs and sprints available for the respective classifications. 
The hill today is a technical one, short and sharp, but the descent down the other side could prove to be a springboard for a number of these riders as they try to escape the clutches of the peloton to see if they could take out the second to last stage here in this year's tour. The bunch rolls out for some three kilometres worth of neutral section as they'll bring the riders over the climb of the day here. And as we've mentioned at the top of the show, this has got a technical climb as they zigzag their way up where a crowd is starting to gather here in the sunshine out at Miramar around the coastline, the peninsula here in Wellington. And they'll drop the flag and it'll be all on for young and old here. This will be a very, very quick stage you would expect with the types of conditions that are out there. The wind is buffeting the riders a fair bit here. They will experience, no doubt, the headwinds as they make their way up through the harbour around the other side of this particular circuit of the stage. And riders will be trying to get themselves off the front and get themselves out of sight and out of mind. So expect to see the likes of these sorts of riders right now doing exactly that. Trying to sneak on off, get themselves five or six hundred metres and potentially not be seen by the chasing peloton. As we make out some of the colours, it looks like the St. George Continental team are looking prominent towards the front and are keen to try and break things on up, keeping the pressure on high up into this hill here. And as we said, a very technical descent will make life challenging for riders to try and get themselves up towards the front. As we see one, two, then a few extra riders trying to get themselves across. Now an individual here. This is going to go on all day long over the 12 laps of the circuit here. It would be very tough indeed to try and do this all by yourself the entire way over the 120 kilometers. And you can see now a few other riders who are on the front of the peloton are starting to react as they make their way around the scenic routes here, around the bays, some fantastic crowds watching these riders from the sides of the cafes. There's the man in yellow keeping himself right prominently to the front of the race here as they go around at some 60 odd K an hour. These riders are not mucking around. They're averaging around 14 minutes per lap. As we now start to see things settle down with a group of four riders of Campbell Pithy, number 11. He's the man there in the St. George colours. You've got Dan Gardner, Ari Scott and Genki Yamamoto on that of Japan. They are the four who have made themselves available at the front of the field. Meanwhile, safely tucked away in the peloton is Orem. He's of course got just a five second advantage but it's over his own teammate Josh Burnett who of course took out the Queen stage yesterday. So the four continue to roll together and you just noted then speed humps on the circuit. That's another thing these riders are having to contest with here today. But they're all professionals. They know how to adapt and are always very aware of what's going on out on the road here. As you can see the gap is opening up to around a minute and a half now for these riders. Which actually puts Gardner, the man from the United Kingdom, as the virtual leader on the road here in the stage. Here we have a great shot of the leading four getting down the descent, the very technical descent, but what a difference this will be with just a small group of four riders here. They'll be have the ability to be able to see clearly in front of them with such a tiny group and get a lot quicker off the descent. In comparison here to the chasing 70 odd riders here in the tour where they have to deal with of course not only the technicalities of the descent but also a large group trying to do so. Great move by these four and of course they're getting plenty of direction from their teammates and then more importantly from their team managers. Garner being a great example, he's got Tim Pawson, the manager of the Pista Corsa development team. And of course uh, Tim, he's got his son Edward riding in here. Tim himself has won a lot of these major tours over the years as a former New Zealand representative. So to have that experience in behind you is no doubt played today here to get Garner off the front. They would have discussed the sort of move that could be made here. Could it be the winning move of the day with these four? And of course you've got the Japanese rider in there who's one of the few internationals who's made the junction here off the front today and he is looking for himself to take out a stage and it would be the first international to do so. The Dutchman yesterday came very, very close but not quite the cigar in the end as we saw the yellow jersey flick on by. We see the Rujai team. They are the team with the bright orange helmets. They are starting to pick up the pace and trying to secure these guys back in time 
to make themselves available for the finish. As you saw, a bit of a shot of one of the Air New Zealand planes coming on in. We're not too far away from the International Airport here in Wellington. So if you're not familiar with the place or are familiar with the place, you will know exactly where we are getting around the peninsula as they make their way up the climb once again. And there's a few faces starting to be pulled amongst these uh, four guys here as they've been out there for quite some time. And a bit of a feed station occurs for these riders going up the hill. We've said it all week long. Keep hydrated. Keep the fluids up. Keep the food into yourself here. It's a long way out there all day long, and the time is starting to tumble. We're now under a minute as we get down to our closing kilometers here of this 120-kilometer stage. But still, the four are working extremely well here together. They're four completely different teams, but once again have made the decision that we need to share the workload evenly. We need to ensure that we can try and do the best we possibly can to keep the field at bay. And it's been interesting as we've shot back to a number of times to that peloton that some of these teams here that we see on the front, their sprinters are sitting well back in the peloton, knowing full well that these guys here are being given a chance to try and take out the stage. But if they do get sucked back in, they are sitting back there waiting for what they always love, the bunch kick. And it is a real possibility on this particular stage. Very similar in some respects to the Martinborough stage on day two. So you would see the likes of the Kirkazoos. You would see the likes of Munchway. You would see the likes of Rice, who the other day got himself second into Martinborough. They're the sort of guys who will be hovering just further back in the field there, waiting for their opportunity. As we saw a bit of a sprint go through early on there with that four, group of four, these guys here, picking up some more points for themselves in the Wizwire sprint ace here. But as I said earlier, they're really keen, more in particular, to try and take out the stage victory. They'll be getting plenty of calls from the side of the road, particularly up the climb, where I know a number of the supporters of the teams are there with the stopwatches. It's going over the speaker system as they go through the finish as well, and the riders will tune to that to know how they are going off the front. Still hovering around that one minute as they continue to share lap by lap here for themselves as they make their way around the peninsula. 3k to go, you can see that gives them an idea when they get down to that final lap exactly where the sprinters will start to line themselves up. But there's a few laps still to go for that to happen yet. Great shot here of the technology on the bike. Pretty stock standard these days with the riders riding the disc brakes here. They came into vogue a few years ago. There was a bit of controversy whether or not they're the best way to go. Some riders still, some teams still opting not to ride those there. But for the vast majority, that's the way they go as they pound on the big gears. The speed is getting higher and higher. Of course these guys at one o'clock this afternoon, an afternoon stage for these riders went out of the blocks at over 60 odd k an hour and they have been pretty relentless, particularly the four off the front. The main peloton it seesawed a little bit with the timing here as they took a bit of a rest if you can describe it that way. They just eased off at certain times. Bolton equities continue to be towards the front as they try to control things, which will be a little bit more challenging today because Bolton equities, along with a number of teams, have lost a number of their riders due to sickness. There's been a bit of sickness going through the uh, teams over the last couple of days. I know Bolton equities, as an example, are down now to some four riders as Ollie Jones uh, succumbed to the sickness here in this particular stage. And now we see the moves going harder off the frontier and we are very quickly down to two riders it is Gardner though who is not giving up he is relentless here along with Yamamoto of Japan who's just struggling a little bit there as they head on uphill and now we see looks like Gilbertson coming across from the peloton as the time is shutting down this is looking around about 25 second gap very quickly coming down there the rider's not too interested in grabbing the drink bottles as they can see now this is a pressure moment into these last couple of laps. And it's great to see the Mighty Q New Zealand Cycling Project team starting to make their moves. Theo Gilbertson, he has a nudge across. He's going across to Gardner, who's been out there for a long time. So it'll be interesting with relatively fresh legs versus someone who's been out in the front doing a huge amount of effort throughout this particular stage but they'll settle into it as quick as they possibly can another team that's been affected by the sickness might Q new zealand cycling project but now they've given the opportunity here for theo he's waited patiently 
Could this be a move for their particular team here to try and take a stage out? It is still hovering now only at around the 22nd mark here for those two off the front. And you can see now that a number of the teams have established themselves into an order to ensure that they're starting to line up their sprinters because they're starting to make the decision that this could be a bunch kick into the finish. But Gilbertson, if he can have his way, he's not interested in that there. He wants the escape off the front. He wants to take this one out. Gardner is holding on for dear life after a huge effort off the front, and I would suggest will be the most aggressive rider of the day for that particular category. On the front, though, you can see Curry, who's been doing a power of work for his team for the Bolton Equities Black Spoke Pro Cycling. Of course, this is a man who's finished fourth in the world in the time trial. He's, a, he's been a New Zealand under-23 time trial champion. He knows how to pound those pedals hard on the front, and he doesn't mind if 60, 70 riders are sitting there on him because this is his job here today to try and pull back these guys and line up the likes of Mudgeway as the bell is rung. And now we just have the one solo effort going off the front. Gardner, as you could expect, and that he's done a fine effort off the front all day long, has been succumbed to the energies and has gone back into the main peloton. Gilbertson trying desperately to hold them at bay here, but it looks like it's going to be to no avail as now we see the field come together and no doubt the sprinters start to line themselves up with the last couple of kilometers here. They start to string themselves out, making life very, very difficult here for the challenges further on back. If you're more than 10 back, you could say goodbye to this one here. As we see, it looks like the man in yellow himself, James Oram, is on the front here. He looks like he's got the rest of his team all tucked in here. They're trying to line up Mudgeway, who's sitting in third wheel. Burnett sitting in second. This is outstanding to see. The man in yellow, he's more of a climber, but today... He is going to be the domestique. They're trying to give Mudgeway the win. Can Bolton Equities take yet another stage out? And I would suggest at this moment it's looking pretty good for them here because the vast majority of the field are being peeled off by the big climbers who are pounding into it as they turn into the finishing straight. Baronet brings him into the last 800 metres. He pulls on over and now slingshots into it goes Mudgeway. Mudgeway is opening up a big gap here. He's going to have time to put the arms up in victory and take out the stage four of this year's tour in fine fashion once again Bolton Equities and a fine effort by the youngster from the New Zealand team Lewis Bauer to secure second place from Kian Watts who should do enough now to confirmly put himself into the green jersey as they head into the final stage of this year's tour but Mudgeway proving too strong too quick here on day four in the tour. Oh, joining us is Luke Mudgeway taking out a fantastic sprint finish and it must have been a huge team effort out there today Luke. Yeah, no, it was a big team effort today, um, especially by Logan Curry. He um, he rode from the start pretty much, kept the kept the brake in check all day. Um, yeah, we had a couple of riders get the the stomach bug that's been going around here. Um, so yeah, we're down to four. Made it for a hard day yesterday and a, a hard day today. But um, yeah, Logan, yeah, rode magnificently. Brake of four went, and then he just. Rode the front the whole lap. He had a bit of help by a couple of riders every now and then, and then over the climb, he had drop back and then ride back on, go straight back to the front every single lap. So, yeah, no, it was a magnificent team effort. And then obviously our two GC riders, um, both climbers, but yeah, they rode like a proper lead out train today, so it was pretty cool. Well, James, I know you're down to four riders now in the tour, but what a team effort there was today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Logan Curry rode like three men, um, and also the two boys who w did fall ill, they're still on the side of the road cheering us on, so, you know, it's a, a full team effort here today. And, of course, it's going to be another big one tomorrow into Lambton Key. What are you expecting? Uh, aggressive racing again. It's always a really fun course. A uh, couple of really tight corners, um, and obviously with the Wellington crowds, it's a really, really cool atmosphere, so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it.